Well, throughout the pandemic, Atlanta Opera has found unique and innovative ways to continue staging live performances, and a key ingredient has been its partnership with Atlanta's Center for Puppetry Arts. And they are at it again with a new production of the classic The Three Penny Opera, which is being presented under a huge tent outside the Cobb Energy Performing Arts Center. Good day, Paul Milliken is live there this morning. Paul, how, uh, first of all, how is this going to work? And you will not be singing, correct? <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know where you heard that because I've been warming up all morning, uh -oh. but Lanford, in fact, if you heard up. during the seven o'clock hour, Sharon Lawson will be singing too. We're both <laughs> going to come up with some kind of a duet to sing for everybody. All yeah, I'll, I'll tell you how it works. I mean, this is a fascinating way to do a live production. And we talked about Atlanta Opera back in the fall when they did a presentation of Pagliacci and they did it with the Center for Puppetry Arts. And really the reason for that is, of course, right now during the pandemic, you can't have big crowds of actors together on stage. So how do you get around that? Well, you supplement some of the people with puppets and Pagliacci was a huge hit. So now they're doing it again. Now, if you remember watching Pagliacci puppets, you know, they were very cool. They were like these sort of, I don't know, they were almost like cut out puppets, very whimsical. These are some mean looking puppets over here that are taking over the three penny opera and they are incredible. We're hanging out with John Ludwig, who is the artistic director of the Center for Puppetry Arts. First of all, I mean, what's it been like collaborating with the Atlanta Opera to do live performances right now? Well, the key you said is live. Yeah. And that was such a wonderful for everybody in the room was like, oh my God, we're with people again. <laughs> right. And people in puppets. And that's where we came in. Tomer had had this idea uh, back in Pagliaccia of crowds of puppets. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, well, that's great. That's what puppets can do. It's creative. And, and so you have, you reduce the number of puppeteers to keep it safe. Right. And uh, so we came up with these uh, incredible puppets that uh, make a crowd scene and yeah. they and they're, and then they fill out the stage. So it looks like a, it looks huge. It's like a spectacle, but it's only six puppeteers. Yeah, it, it, it is such a smart way to, like you said, fill out the stage when we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Now, Jason, you were the man that had to design and build all of these puppets. And first of all, you know, I asked you before how long you had to do this. I expected you said it was going to take like six months to a year to do this work. How long did you have? Uh, not very long. We first found out that we were doing this uh, back in uh, January man. and then rehearsal started in March. And there was so. a team of like four of you that we're cranking these out right here. Now, how would you describe the style of puppetry here? What what are these exactly? Uh, well, it's kind of a unique style that we came up with uh, because we have a lot more puppets and we have puppeteers, mm -hmm. so they all have to be freestanding at points. Yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of times in puppete puppetry, we'll have three or four puppeteers on one puppet. Right. In this, we have like one puppeteer for like three or four puppets. Yeah. So it's very different than anything we've done before. Yeah, and you know, you think puppets a lot of times, and of course our mind goes to Sesame Street or the Muppets or Fraggle Rock, things that are aimed for young audiences. These are like adult puppets, yes, right? Yes, they are. <laughs> well, one of the concepts of the Three Penny Opera, it's, it's supposed to cost three pennies, so everything is supposed to look really cheap. Ah. So that's why it's all paper mache and it's yeah. all really rough and thrift store clothes. Well, I got to say, though, they are incredible to look at in person. So let's find out how they work. Okay, so can you give us a little demo? Like this little guy, wait, what did you say this little guy's name is? Uh, it's Jimmy there. Hey, Jimmy, it's nice. A, a puppet my own size, too. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, let's see. I want to see you move. Jimmy. Okay, okay. Um, let's see, I can take it to the 90s. The running man. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You I like that, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, watch this, watch this, watch this. I've been really working on my fitness. So... Ooh, oh. nice flex, bro. I yeah. love it. That's yeah. cool. Okay, and then, you know, we've, we've got the bad guy, so then we got to have the constable over here. So, uh, constable, let's see a move. Oh, uh, well, he's kind of like a Sicilian marionette, so he can be like, hey, McHeath, I got oh, you now. I love that. Or he can also salute. Hello, sir. How are you? Yeah. Top of the morning to you. I love <laughs> it. They have so much personality. All right, now look. There's this guy on the other side of the camera, this guy, Buck Lanford, who gives me a hard time every morning. I, I never instigate anything. He's huh. just mean. And look, I need some backup. So c show me what you would do to Buck Lanford if he was right here. Okay, let's oh, see it. Let's see it. Buck, if you were here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. Yes. Get him. All right. I got my team right here. Yes. I am Get scared him. to death yep. now, Paul. Take you don't swing. scare me a bit, but those two. <laughs> yeah. You better watch out, yeah. Buck. You better watch out, Buck Lanford. <laughs> I'm looking over my shoulder. <laughs> Too much fun, Paul. Thank Thanks, you. Paul. That's awesome.